Yo, 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 what's going on, world? This your boy Najee from rapradar.com. And today, man, usually I say special guest. This is not even, this is more than special because this is like family right here. Word, like, word. This ain't even yeah. a family. Like, yeah. this is my guys right yeah. here. Mm -hmm. And you see, I got the Flatfoot Zombies in the building. Hello, everybody. Hey, guys. Yes, sir. What's going on, guys? Shit, man, I'm smoking cigars with you. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. Finally, took this a long time. This is I'm coming. I'm glad we finally like sitting here doing this shit, man. It's it's like a, a lot going on, a lot happening. How obviously like the latest shit was this governor's ball. Niggas was supposed to come out for governor's ball. Yeah, they did ball. it dirty. The uh, rain was hating on y'all. How like how was that experience? Like what, what was that? Just being up there and I feel like wrestling, man. What do you mean? What do you mean? Like the intensity of the crowd. Yeah. Um, just coming out there to them throwing trash out, <laughs> getting them to stop throwing trash, then getting them to applause us, then getting them to say, fuck governor's ball. Yeah. I mean, hey, like, we, didn't oh, we didn't get them to say that. Okay, we didn't get them to say that. We didn't get them to say that. Emotionally, emotionally, not um, verbally, you heard? Right. So like, I don't know, it felt like the rest of them felt, felt special. Were the, were the fans like mad initially? Like when they cut the shit off, they was like, yo. I think they were disappointed really. Um, yeah. Very disappointed because they waited in the rain and then a lot of our fans waited, it was on Sunday. Yeah. So if they got passes on Friday, they really waited till Sunday to see a band that they didn't get to see. Right. They didn't get to hear a song. They didn't put our mic on, so I couldn't even talk to the crowd. Damn. It was just all like sign language to the crowd, but they got it. You know, right. they figured it out. Right. That shit was trash, man. To be at home and not being able to perform is like, how could I? What's an analogy? It's like, it's like being able to fuck a bunch of prostitutes and then you finally get home to your wife and it's like your dick just, just goes inside of himself. So. Or, or. It's crazy ass analogy. I was trying to follow that. I was like, work, work. Oh, wait, wait. I was just going to say it's like playing for the Knicks on the bench. Yeah, okay. Or something like that. Right. With the Knicks team, like too. Yeah. Shout out to the prostitute shit works, too, I guess. came out, too. And they got caught in the flood and shit. Oh, and word? Yeah, they, they saw a lot of chaos out there. Damn. Shout out to them for even coming, though. Right. I mean, obviously, so, you know, this Beast Coast thing is, is hitting right now. Y'all are number 29 right now on Billboard. Yeah. I mean, Let's I go. can use a better number, but we're not going to get into numbers. You know, I mean, it's growing. 29 and growing? You got to figure, too. It's not like it says Flatbush Zombies or Joey Badass. Or it's a new it group. says Beast Coast. So yeah. that, to me, is a great achievement for a new group. Absolutely. You know? I'll tell you what a great achievement is to me. Making an album with 10 of my friends that does not sound like anything anyone thought we was going to make. That's a fact. That's really what it yeah. is to me. I didn't want to make some shit. Mm -hmm. We spent that time making something that everybody guessed we were going to make. Was that like a conscious decision, like collectively, like, yo, we're trying to make something sonically different? We ain't force it. I it wasn't like so. a, yeah. yo, guys, it's not like if we made a fire boom bap song, we'd be like, no, we can't do this. But yeah. I think all of us went in there like, fuck it, it's 10 of us. We're strong enough to do whatever the fuck we want. If, if Eric wanted to sing, if you want to scat, I'd like scat, nigga. Do stop, 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 do what you gotta do. And we would have figured it out. Everything hey. in his singing bag now, too, yeah, though. You feel me? Right. 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 Low key. Right. You know what I mean? Hey. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Yo, I think I think it's just interesting because like even when I heard the first the first two singles, right? We had Left Hand and Coast Clear, Fire. And then like sonically, like you said, Coast Clear was different. I love this shit. I'm mm. like, I still I'm bumping that crazy, Coast Clear. And I'm watching the the shit, and I feel like some of the fans are just not used to the sounds, and they're like, yo, what is this? Like, yeah. how do y'all feel just, like, when you see that just from a fan perspective, like, them not necessarily gravitating to a, a sound sonically? I think, like, I'll be lying if I said it don't bother me. It bothers me to some degree just because it's like, I want people to like anything we make. Yeah. But truthfully, I like the song a lot, so... It only lasts for like a couple seconds and then I'll see somebody say it's fire and then I'm like, it is fire, you know? But like, that would never change how I feel about it. Right. I think that night when we made the song, we all was like, yo, I know niggas might not fuck with this shit. Oh, y'all knew already? Yeah, like, it was kind of like, we was kind of like, uh, but we was like, it's fire though. We yeah. all kind of knew that people, I want to stop. You know I want to stop fighting this feeling that I have inside when I make something good. That's not a good feeling as an artist when you make music and you got to doubt and second guess because mm -hmm. some fans won't like something. You know that when Biggie made music, I'm sure when he made Hypnotize, a nigga said, this club shit is whack. That there had to be a nigga that literally was saying, this club shit is whack. So I look back at niggas like Biggie and say, damn, if he could do all that stuff, why the fuck can't I? And if a little 14 year old kid doesn't like one song because he thinks I'm trying to sound like a guy that I've never listened to in my life, <laughs> then so be it, bro, because I'm talented, Eric's talented, Juice is talented. And Flabber Zombies aren't no one trick pony. We don't make one one-sided, one style music. So 
if one song with auto-tune or melody makes you sad, yeah. go back and listen to the 45, 55, 75 other songs that does not have that. Yeah, like my old shit, That's buy my fact. old album. That's a fact. Yeah, go. You know what I mean? But I think it's just funny, though. Why do you think that they are so gung-ho on this, like, don't go out of this box? Because we, like we the last. Like, we the last. It, what is it about yeah. that that just makes it like, yo, we like y'all to do this? I think we the last of, like, authenticity to them. Like, even a lot of these people who like us, they still like the other guys, too, yeah. that they want to act like they don't. They just want, they hold us to a different standard. It's literally like, um, I'm not mad, I'm disappointed. Yeah. It's like that kind of shit. They yeah. love us, and a real fan will love you. I hate to say it, but they'll love you regardless of whatever you do because you gave them something that they can hold close to their heart. That's, what I, that's at least what I feel like. Yeah. If Biggie yeah. was to drop 12 whack albums after, I still had Ready to Die, Life After Death, I'm good. So... I think that our fans just hold us at a different standard. They know how nice we are. So whenever they feel like we're not trying to overbar them to death. Yeah. Or for instance, some, some Juice fans love his melodies and his, his voice. Right. Some of his fans love his aggression. How does he balance both of those things in every song? <laughs> some niggas, they fans only like them for one thing. Right. We, our fans like us for everything. It's so hard to give spirituality, ignorance, fun. <laughs> Like, talk about karma, talk about getting fly. It's Pussy. the hardest thing. We, 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 we did something that nobody else has done. Yeah. Well, you can, we can't do it every song. It's impossible. <laughs> right. Did you just bat me that light right there? Yo, I want to know. So, we got <clears throat> Escape from New York, right? Now, y'all are the Flatbush Zombies. This is Beast Coast, but the title is Escape from New York. Escaping. Escaping from New York. Why? why? Like, that, it's just interesting to me, just that dynamic. Escaping why? from the box. Mm. The box of the clearance and the shit we just spent five minutes talking about. Yeah. Like escaping that, experimenting, doing shit from within for ourselves, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. Not not getting caught in that, oh, y'all about to do an album together, y'all all grew up in New York. All right, so the beats are going to sound like, it ain't hard to tell, um, halftime, we're going to take some mob beats on it. It was none of that. It was like, we are from New York. We don't have to prove to anybody. If anything, I'd rather leave that sound. That sound is the easiest thing on the planet Earth to me, right? Like, if you lock me in with <laughs> Pete Rock and DJ Premier, We'll be all right. Like that sound is, is right. easy for us. Yeah. You know, it's not as easy challenging yourself. <coughs> that's not as easy. So that's what that that's what that title means to me. Escaping that mind state for all you guys from New York, male, female, cat, dog. Stop, stop keeping us under this this box to like make a certain type of music. There's a reason why we are where we are right now because we don't. Before everybody was trying to box everyone into sound like a New York artist, and I still don't really know what the hell that shit even means, Najee. I'm not even sure what New York music sounds like either. That's what I mean. I don't know what is that now, right? Right, like right now, today, 2019. My observation is, is and my New York radio music. plays music from. My observation is, so how is what that? it is. Something comes out, it's outside the box. If it sounds old, they're gonna say this shit sound like all the other shit, right? Yeah. Then if it sounds outside the box, they're gonna say, man, this shit weird. But then if the labels pay enough money for the radios to play it. Man, you gotta play this shit. This shit is, I watched it with Bobby Smurda. I watched niggas say, hot, hot nigga don't got no chorus. How is this a single? Yeah. And it became the biggest song on the planet Earth. Facts. So it's, it's, I don't really know what the New York sound is. The New York sound is to me anything that a nigga from New York makes. Nah. That's I think New until they see a music video and a nigga with Tim's and shit, it's like, oh, this is New York. Like, but the songs though, like, what is that? To that me, ain't true. I had Tim's on. Who's still I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, being, I'm being funny when I say it, but I, I just mean like, I mean, like, New York itself, and this is fucked up because us being from New York is like, we know this, but maybe the rest of the world ain't visiting New York. New York is one of the most diverse places in the fucking world. Mm -hmm. So when people say shit like New York style, New York is a fucking melting pot. It has everything. So we're taking from a little bit of everything. You tell me uh, people from other places, Atlanta or Miami, they didn't hear, you know, Primo, or these guys growing up when we was kids, like, and being influenced and taking it back home to them. Like, why can't we... It's an even exchange to me, man. So how do you, like, how do you, Eric, like, just you being such a focal point of crafting the sound, right? Like, Word. How, how do you kind of gauge it, like, when you're working with just Beast Coast and New York sounds? Like, what was that like? Because you're working with a bunch of different producers. It wasn't just you this time. Yeah, I think this time, that was a good question. This time, like, I think we, I did Problems. I did Snow in the Stadium. I did Puke. Tyler and I did Rubber Band. That's a band. Band. Yeah. Yeah. That's hey. hard. Yeah. yeah. I feel like, you know, not only um not only was it fun, I think that even before we started this project, I was going through this thing where I'm just like, I don't really want to make beats alone. Mm. Um, I think I did that for too long where I felt like, I don't know, it's kinda like hard to be like, yo, I'm done with this beat. 
And sometimes I would send it to another producer and they'd be like, yo, can I throw something on them? I'm like, of course. Yeah. Sometimes they would feel intimidated and I don't know why because I'm not perfect, you know? Like, I feel like, you know, one of my homies, he plays sax. One of my other boys play guitar. I play guitar a little bit. My homies play piano. Like, there's always to, a way to incorporate that if it makes a song better, you right. know? I think with this project, it was like, my favorite beat that I did was like Snow in the Stadium, but I did that totally by myself at home. Mm. Oh, I did Bones, too. Bones we made Bones, oh, yeah. in the studio that night. So it has, like, a feeling of where we were and what was going on. I think, like, the dynamic that changed with this was, like, I had to figure out how to arrange that. Because, right. you know, with just us three, that's enough work. You know, this one verse per song, traditionally, right? But this is, like, ten niggas, nine yeah. niggas. I mean, and, but that's an even bigger point I want to just hear from y'all, right? Like, is I was... You know, we, we all work together. Like I said, y'all my bros, so like we did this whole vacation to hell journey together. That's like right. I'm in the studio with y'all. We was cold as shit in that other yep. studio in the studio. You know what I'm saying? Like Shout out Atlantic Ass. Shout out Atlantic Ass. Oh, you know what I'm saying? So like oh, yo, we I, I was there for that. So I got to see that what that looks like. How does that moment differ from what it's like creating with ten people? Like, you know the, the saying is always when there's too many chefs in the kitchen. Like how does that work when it's ten motherfuckers in a studio trying to like cohesively put something together you gotta at least for me you gotta have tough skin man because we was by meat crib the day before we turned it in and uh you know she got we i feel like there was a set order of maybe something that we thought we were gonna do yeah and then all of that changed you know what i'm saying and like you gotta be ready to you know to, yeah. you might not be on a song like a song might not be what you imagine especially it's like we're making so much music that you might gravitate to one song more than i do so you're at home saying, oh, I can't wait for rubber band when I tell them to do the guitar solo at the end and all this shit. And you get there, we're like, nah, rubber band not going to even make the album. Yeah. Right? And it's like, oh, crushed, shit. Right? And, and you're like, right. you got to, but every, I feel like everyone took, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a group, so there's a sacrifice. Everybody took a blow. Like, I, Last Choir is one of my favorite songs. I have a verse on there that turned to a chorus. I'm not, it hurt me at first. It's like, damn, I want to pick niggas to hear that verse. But what they did with my verse to make it a chorus made the song better. So I'm like, nah, I'm mad at it. It doesn't. I was on distance and I took myself off because I feel like it would be a better song without me. Why? Why? My verse wasn't really hitting the same subject matter as the rest of it as well. Sometimes it's length, sometimes yeah. it's sonics. Like sometimes if Eric and Joey and, and you were in the booth together and y'all recorded and I happened to come in 30 minutes later, I might have missed that, whatever it may be. It might have been just a little bit of the energy for my cadence. It might have right. been just something. So me trying to plug in after, and that's what I learned in this group. You gotta learn when to leave. Like, just learn when to step the fuck away or, like, be able to, like, yo, all right, I'm not on this one. Yeah. Or if I am on this one, I'm here energy-wise. Mm -hmm. I'm here ad-libs. Or I was on the song, but you took me off. So technically, my energy's still there. Y'all just don't see me. Yeah. And that's what I learned with this album a lot. Like your verse could inspire somebody's verse that's on the song. Exactly. Yeah. So, if left hand was like that, I started off left hand. You could have took me off a left hand right after. Every, there would have been a song. Everybody else would have been existed. on it. So I learned a lot about that, like, how to work with so much people and not take shit personal. Like, mm -hmm. not at... Yo, you don't like this verse? All right, cool. Five other people do, so let's figure it out. And that's really all it is. So can what? I talk some nerd shit real quick? About some real quick? Yeah. This is some real nerdy shit I'm about to get into right oh, now. Oh, boy. All right. All right. <laughs> Nine people, right? This is, a, this is a, one of the best hip-hop groups of all time to me. Correct. Right. Okay? Correct. Part of the reason why that exists is because when I talk, my voice is here. His voice is a little higher than mine. His voice is the bottom. When you're talking about mixing and arranging a song with niggas that have different vocal ranges, oh, that is crazy. the most difficult, mm. hands down, the most difficult thing with I this. I still think people you know? that haven't really figured out, some people don't really know the album, are still trying to figure out, is that Joey, is that Meech, is that... Right. Like, because yeah, niggas' voices is, is, is similar. Like, Joey and Meech have a similar voice, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and not like, obviously, delivery, yeah. but we're talking about where it sits on the vocal range. Like, so when people try to say shit like, I don't know if this is blah, 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 it's like... Cause they talk similar, nigga. Like right, it's not, right. it's not, it's not something we can do. I, as a producer, I can't change that much. It won't sound like Joey or Meech anymore, you know. But I just wanted to say that just because a lot of people listen to the album, and they'll be like, "Oh, it just sounds like a cipher." And I'm like, "Hip hop was founded on ciphers. Yeah. What else are you supposed to do with nine individuals?" You know. I mean, it's always gonna sound somewhat of a cipher just because I everybody's thought that was fire. there. I thought but that it sounded too. good. That that's the part I love. But that's what I want to know is like, what like creatively when you guys are creating this, is it like? everybody is in a room sort of like kind of paint the picture is it like yo the whole fucking beast coast is in a room writing shit together is it like niggas is writing verses at home and it's coming to spit it mm -hmm. like i, I, I want think, the fans to sort of understand just the process of every like how y'all create i think every right? song was a different process like something some songs 
was like left hand I already had that verse already recorded and then people just slowly piled on to that song yeah. after I sent it in it was like yo are we trying to fuck with this and it's all oh, of this everybody liked this so everybody piled on but a song like problems it was seven people in the studio and Eric said let's rap about problems and then he led the way and then everyone followed sometimes somebody's in California so they might send distance they sent from California mm-hmm. like yo hop on this who wants to hop on this seven people hopped on it it became three people <laughs> so it's like it's a lot of then there's sometimes we're like, oh shit, we don't have this kind of sound and we consciously know we gotta fill this void so someone makes that sound. I feel like this album, that's why I said this album taught me also how to figure out what you need for the moment and make it. I feel like the album has almost a song for everybody except for the classic hip hop guys that wanna hear the same drum loops that's existed since the 80s. But other than that, this album pretty much has something for everybody and that happened naturally. Like We didn't think we need a song for girls. We just recorded so much music that eventually one day we made a song for girls yeah. and then there it was yeah, there. Boy. We recorded We Are Caribbean, so we made a song that we're singing in reggae and all that kind of shit. Yeah. None of it was really fully, I don't think any song was fully like, we need a turn up record and then we went there and did it. It was all just components that and not to wrote. mention, we recorded like fucking 30 songs. Oh yeah, that's so, true. Yeah. And I know that's a trend right now, but I'm not gonna, I didn't think it was smart to put a bunch of songs that we just recorded. You know, yeah. and I, even on the zombies wave, like when we make music, we usually put on our albums what we record. So this was probably the first yeah, like time. No extras. Yeah. Yeah, like we don't really I mean, do that. We, do vacation. we didn't really have a lot of loops. Yeah, yeah. We don't really, we don't yeah. do like the. I hear a lot of people say, "Yo, that song got the album got 21 songs." I know y'all recorded 40, and I'd be like, "Nah, nah. <laughs> right. we recorded 25. We got 21. Yeah. Like maybe recorded 24. We honestly, for us, we don't even feel like we have the time to be recording shit we don't need to record. Right. We just record. What we need. That's a fact. Get it done. And we all respect each other. That's why it was easy to do. Not easy, but that's why it was fun. That's yeah. why it came out and sounded the way it did. Right. So you gotta respect each other. Nah, for sure. I mean, one of my favorite joints, I told you, Rubber Band and Desperado, I, I, I got them shits on repeat. Like, yeah. what was the Desperado? Like, yeah. what, what was that like? Just, Derek what was the it. ideas kind of around that? That's my shit right there. Um, the beat just had that guitar. It reminded me of Antonio Benaderas with the guitar, the guitar case with the gun, like the movie. Desperado. <laughs> so instantly when I heard the beat, I was just like, I just saw the I just saw the, the chorus, everything just came literally. It was like this. Once I heard the guitar, yeah. it was just Desperado and I screamed Desperado and I just fed off the energy. That was one of the albums where like while I'm recording, I'm saying shit out loud and looking at everybody. And if I see people saying it, repeating it back, like when I said Desperado, nah, 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 I seen like Joe repeat it, Eric repeat it. I'm like, all right, so that's obviously something. So that I just kept writing. This was a funny writing process. A lot of my writing on this was like, just talking out loud mm. and then hearing how the words sound and seeing how my friends react to it right. and then putting it on wax and that's really what it was. It wasn't even like a, all right, this one's gonna be like for the Mexican fans that love the Spanish guitar. <laughs> it, it was literally just the first, I liked <laughs> a lot. Mexican fans. I liked the, no, we got mad Mexican fans. Shout out Mexican Shout fans. Shout out to the Mexican fans. I, I, I liked in this album that we didn't overthink any of that kind of shit. It was just yeah. like the first thing that came to my mind, we laid down. For me, once Joey was like, I ain't never had no idols. Meet him in the Antonio Rivals. I was like, I gotta get it. <laughs> <laughs> Once I heard that, I was like, I'm on this. Like, Actually, wait. my favorite part of that song is the Got him on his hip, big toe. The high, the high yeah, shit. Yeah, when when Joey's the high note, I was the high. The high note was fire, but like, when he said that, when, uh, it's coming from niggas' heads. Yeah. So that's the kind of shit that makes me want to like write sometimes, like coming at people or just like talking about how good you are and shit. It's funny, Juice, because you, you. That's the joy I wanted to see and get on the album. And when I got that part of Joe, I was like, yes, I wanted the song like immediately. How do you, but how do you approach, is it just like, with your approach, because when I listen to you, like you said, like Meech said, it's just there's so much versatility just yeah. when you come in aggressive or like even on vacation, like, you know, you'll talk some real, you know, shit about like, you know, they, the only time they mention in blacks is when, yeah. you know, there's negative views. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? How, how do you sort of approach just the content aspect of what you're saying? This album, if Eric didn't make problems, there would be no like real <laughs> conceptual parts of me on the album. I just wanted to bring like the energy and the aggression, like Major was saying, like that's what I wanted to bring on the album. Yeah. But when Eric brought in problems, I was like, yes, there's a nice time for me to do something else different and talk about some problems and I had some high notes or some shit. <laughs> but I just wanted to bring the aggression and the energy to the album. Like, that's, is that's it, my mindset. Is it weird, like, when y'all are talking about socioeconomic things that affect black people and then, like, have an audience where there's a lot of white people there yeah. and they're listening to that. Is that I love it. Like, I love it. I love it. I love it. You, you know why I love it? You know why I love it? Because they're ignorant to a lot of that shit. The same way our black people are very ignorant to a lot of that shit. I'm speaking to whoever's listening. Mm. 
Mm. Don't care what the color of your skin is. If it was butterflies, it would be a fucking concert full of butterflies listening. Right. So if a bunch of little white boys, a bunch of little white girls, a bunch of little Asian kids hear me talk about the black struggle, that's very important because we're somebody's favorite artist. And they might have a half black kid one day. Mm -hmm. Or they might not. But they might need to know what's going on with other races so that we can make the world a better place and not only talk about things I can buy. Shit like that is important. I would love to hear what the what a fucking Mexican American has to say, a rapper, about America right now. One of my favorite verses on that, the YG album, like two albums ago, is one where he has a Mexican dude on it. Um, oh, uh, it's a song with a dude. It's, it's a oh, still bra but it's still brazy album. It was it still brazy? I think it's still brazy. No, I, think, I love that's one of my favorite. I forgot what the hell the nigga's name is. He's super Mexican, nigga. Yeah, like he bodied it too. So you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Like he's literally talking in that California Mexican accent, yeah. and I'm like, that shit is important for a nigga like me to hear his struggle as a brown person. So to me. I'm not ever mad. I'm not, when I look at the crowd and see a bunch of white people, I don't. My favorite shit is when we get comments, damn, the crowd is white. And I'm like, we're in fucking Europe. <laughs> what, in, what do you expect? We're in yeah, Europe. Yeah, like, yeah, what? Yeah, God yeah. damn, where's your it's black friends? Where's God. your black, black fans in Berlin? I'm like, nigga, there's it's like not, 12 black people out here. <laughs> they're they're gonna, gonna, yeah. they're gonna see them. Right. I'm gonna come clean when we get like out of the East Coast and the Midwest, it, it turns more Mexican and it turns more black. Like in Atlanta, it'd be yeah. mad black people. Like, mm -hmm. it just depends on where we are, bro. Right. Do, do they ever, like, because I, I always just think that dynamic is interesting. Like, I remember I went to a Freddie Gibbs concert one time. Shout out Gibbs. And, um, Gibbs. And, um, like I said, there was a, a good amount of white people there. He got a song called Rob Me a Nigga. So I'm looking in the crowd, and it's just mad oh, white people no. like, Rob Me a Nigga. Rob me. I was like, oh, shit, should I get out of here? Or like, that was, like, yeah. But, like, I just always think it's dope just the, you know, the cultural exchange that's sort of happening there. Like, do the fans ever bring shit like that up to y'all? Well, like, when they you come know, up to you and talk about shit like that? Some you of know. them, like, some of them, like, will say, I'm a white person, or I'm a white bitch, I'm a white nigga, like, they, like, put themselves under you because they know the struggle that you went through type shit. They yeah. Know what right. you know what I was going to say, like, um, I actually seen a video, I don't know what race he was, he wasn't black, but I seen somebody in their car driving, and they yeah. said, it ain't easy, it ain't easy. And it was like, used to be my ace boom coon, and now, now you coon, coon on, on TV. TV. Wow. Yeah. And like, I thought it was funny because he said coon, but it's like, I wasn't, I, obviously I wrote it so people could repeat it, but I feel like, essentially, if you're just saying that line, and not understanding what it is, the more you repeat it, you may be at home thinking to yourself, no matter what race you are, like, damn, that's some deep shit. It's funny, but it's like, the truth is, like, you used to be my friend, and now you're exporting yourself. Yeah, that could apply to a lot it of, could that could apply to a lot more than menstrual blackface. Exactly. That could, <laughs> right. that could that's apply to him it. liking yeah. the, somebody on Green Bay Packers that disappoint him and looks like a fool. It could be a white quarterback that went on TV looking like an idiot, and it could be a white fan saying, right. you should be my ace boom coon, but now you coon on TV. He may not be applying that to a black person. Yeah. And that's what we got, like, when we listen to music, like, you got to understand the person that's listening to the music is not you. You're, you're the only you. Right. Literally, sure. like that, you always have to remember that when you make this music, or else you'll be scared to say, I'll be afraid to say anything because it's always gonna be someone that I'm gonna either offend or that's not gonna understand it. And that's what rap is about. Everyone listens to this shit, period. We can't only worry about black people. Like, that's a fact. Got, oh, well, everybody's everybody. everybody. That's that's a a real talk, real talk. Yeah. I mean, I think just what's so important about you guys, just in this culture, in hip hop, is like you guys have literally waved the independent flag when it wasn't like the cool thing like mm -hmm. before everyone was doing that yeah. you know and, and realizing like you know you you kind of being able to take control of your career and monetize it and have predominantly the the market share of what you guys are getting how just important is that to you guys still like in this day is that just like the independent aspect is this something that's like yo if we got a a certain number we you know we could go you know touch a major or uh, 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 uh. I don't want to shoot myself. I'm in like the, the label guy now, asking yeah. these type of questions and shit. Like. I don't want to shoot myself in the foot, but I think that labels. I probably never said this in an interview, but labels grant opportunity for um, you know an artist that has a vision, and I guess part of their thing is, and I guess where we were at was like, well, if a label approaches us with infrastructure and all these things, like we kind of already know how to do that. It's just about money, you yeah. know? So you have money that equals promising opportunity, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna be hotter. It doesn't mean that people will like you. More than likely, if people like that you're independent, you ride for that, once you make that switch, they might switch too, you know what I'm saying? And that's not necessarily something I'm ready to do, but I'm also, I'm not bashing it. I just feel like a lot of times people automatically 
to stop fucking with somebody because they started fucking with a bigger name. But you have to understand, if you've been grinding independently for so long, sometimes it's not even about how good you are. It's just the opportunity, you know? Yeah, uh, man. Like On the way here, I was riding on the train, right? And I saw this dude plays better piano than me. Oh, and yeah? Nigga, nobody an, knows. Yeah, he just went to Castle. He's wilding. I'm like, nobody's ever going to see this nigga. Like, That's what I was going to say. Like, you know what I mean? Eric, like, to me, Eric's probably the most underrated hip-hop producer of all time, right? There's so much people that should be. I'll be seeing bum niggas in the studio with great producers. It's a fact. Why can't we get Eric in the studio with Swiss Beats and Pharrell? Beyond me. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe if we had a label, they can be like, yo, Pharrell, you owe me this favor for doing the song with, when you did the singing with the song with Kesha, and then y'all sampled this, that owe me this, and all that, and then there's this trade-off of owing. Right. No one owes us anything. We don't owe anybody anything, so therefore we are the way we are. When we gotta shoot a video, it's our budget. It's the money that we manage. Meaning if me, Juice, and Eric decide we're gonna buy a bunch of Bentleys and chains, there's no music, there's no none of that. But with the label, you can play that game. You can play like, I'm gonna borrow from Peter and pay Paul back later. Right. There's none of that here. We are Peter and Paul, we are the bank, we are everything here. So the thing about a label is if, if a label will bring me and show me what I'm doing wrong and can literally show me and say, this is something, your arms are not long enough to reach this, then I'll fuck with a label. Right. But until then, nah. And I don't really see what a label could. I still think that if we need to get the Pharrell and Swiss beats, we, we, we can get there without. Well, we could definitely get the Swiss. Shout out to Swiss. We're going to have to put you in the studio with Eric. We're going to make a call after this. we got to do that, set that please, up. Please, please. But I'm the new dark man. How I don't got a Swiss? I'm not on the Swiss beats record. I'm the new dark. But that's what I'm saying. I, I saw the, the, the account, the Flappers Handle tweeted, we got the most slept on catalog in, hip, in hip hop. By far. I would, I would definitely say by far. I think it's this thing where they respect us. Niggas know the name. They know they got to respect. They see how mean my face looks, so they're going to shake my hand. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, it's, it's kind of fake to me. It feels, it feels like until I'm dead or Eric's dead or Juice is dead, that's going to be like, yo, I fucked with these niggas. They were the first to show. They are the first to say this because they say that to us when they see us. I just want to know why, like, like I said, I bring Swiss Beats as an example. How am I a uh, fucking spawn of DMX? And this nigga is one of the best producers who's been producing since he was a teenager, like Switch Beats, right. out of New York City. And we just don't get those opportunities. But Joe Schmo from Mississippi that got a new record with a good cadence is going to get all those beats. What I mean, do you think that is, though? Like, what do you think? Because clout. I agree with that. What do you, but what do you think this, where do you think the slept on? Monetization, clout, money, greed. Yo. Niggas don't care about the art, bro. They don't want to make fantastically great music. They don't want to make quotes that people tattoo on their body. They want to make... I seen DJ Khaled talk about... He sent shade to Tyler because niggas, because he didn't see and hear people play the album. Right. What? Like, what is that? What are you talking about? You ever heard anybody play MF Doom, nigga? I right. barely hear that. What are you talking about? You ever drove by somebody playing Dilla? No. How about Tribe? I haven't heard somebody play Tribe Called Quest in the street. Mad important. And that shit right there got to stop, bro. We are literally, that whole statement he's doing in that video is literally how the industry treats the niggas like Flappy Zombies. You, did you hear that music? But it's affecting because at the end of the day, when we go to festivals, who's getting the better, who's getting the better slot? Who has who sells the, the most merch? Who has the bigger crowd? Yo, but the crazy shit, and I love that you just brought that up though, is like, because I was talking about the, that today on Twitter, just like the idea, like that Cali video, right? Like y'all saw that? I watched didn't see the Cali that video, and he was like, I guess he was in the car, he was mad that he got number two Come and on, Tyler bro. got number one. Okay. And then he was like, something along the lines, I'm paraphrasing right now, but it was something along the lines of like, yo, you know, I make music that you hear this outside, you hear it in the barbershop, you hear this places, like that type of shit's supposed to be number one and not shit that's just. You don't hear it nowhere. No, dis but I think I mean the important part to me is like I, I I always say like right now like niche is the new mainstream, right? Mm -hmm. Like Tyler has this base that outsold Khaled, right? Lock. Like this mainstream on guy. Lock. On lock. What do y'all think about that? Because y'all y'all are one of the people well, who have to have a base that's it like makes sense. Nuts. It makes sense. Bro. All right, force feeding. No disrespect. Force feeding people is not how you get people to like stuff. Mm. Period. If I feel like I'm t everywhere I turn, I see your album, I'm ignoring it. Tyler did not force feed anything with anything. It's all about being original and giving your fans what they want. What do DJ Khaled fans want? I don't know. Who don't are know. DJ Khaled's exactly. fans? Exactly. It's his fans are literally anyone that likes hit records. Right. And he happened to not have that big ass record right now. It's not Tyler's fault. And Tyler don't need a hit record. He made a hit album. That's what it's more about. He Tyler the Creator is an album maker. We're album makers. Yeah. They're album makers and they're single guys. Like, and I think that. That, that shit is fucking people up where they think because someone has one big song that they're bigger and better than someone else. You can have a big record, bro. You're not going to be here for 10 years. I've seen it. We've been doing this eight years now. There's mad niggas that got big records, bro, that I have not seen ever again. One bro. and done. And it, it, it's funny because a lot of people equate things like followers and um, 
clout. And I just, I can admittingly say that I don't want to be famous. You know what I'm saying? I could say, since I was a kid, my reason to make music had nothing to do with people shaking my hand and kissing my ass. It's because I love music. And I think that that is bigger than any of the shit that these niggas be chasing now. And I think that that's the reason why people like who we are, you know? And the, the most hurtful part about that is, is that sometimes when you're these big artists, I guarantee you, you have more money than me. I guarantee you fuck more bitches than me. I am guarantee you all of that, whatever. Let's say you are way better than me on the outside. In the inside and what people see, people come up to us and say the most craziest shit that I guarantee these hot artists have never heard. They've never cried in front of you. Like, literally like a guy with his mother crying in front of his mom or like saying, yo, this one song you did changed everything about how I look at myself. Like, I stopped myself from killing myself. That song you did, those, the fact that you even exist, the fact that you have the confidence to get up every day knowing that you put yourself out there, how do you have the confidence to do that? That is not praised as much as it should be in hip hop. You know, I feel like in other genres, especially in the past, like people champion that. Yeah. In hip hop, it's like, who the fuck is this bum ass nigga? But to be truthful, this person is inspiring this other person. So if your music is hot, but nobody, you never heard, yo, that changed my life. How hot are my you? My favorite like, shit. Really that hot my favorite me. shit about this run, doing this Beast Coast album, mm-hmm. was like because we did it with a different with different people, so we got our music got to different places. <clears throat> there was some chart shit that talked about where we debuted. I happened to see it, yeah. and to see comments of people who don't know anything about how charts and I still don't really understand how the charts and music, all this stuff works. And see people like major flop, or they'll say some weird shit like, "Who are these people next?" And like, it's, it's just weird how you think that number twenty nine was a big big deal. See how happy he was. And it's, it's people who don't deal. know, and it is though. Oh, Billboard top no, no, deal. But, but then the people who don't know anything is like. Out of t- there's 200 slots. But then look, look, look at somebody's perspective. They seen, they seen all the names of the people who worked on the album and they said all these, one of the comments that said all these people and they couldn't debut at number one. Meanwhile, DJ Khaled has everyone on the planet Earth and he, and he couldn't debut date. at number one. Right. So it's like, no one really knows what we're doing. It's art. You make art, it touches people, and then you move the fuck on. Like, I don't really understand what the big deal is. So. Number two, we did we ever get number one? We got number one independent album for the first time ever. Yeah, we were number nine. Get and over number it, 11. Khaled. You'll be all right, bro. Like <laughs> I've been number three, four, five, last place my whole life. You'll be okay, bro. Stop throwing shade at the fucking creative artist. What you should have did was made a song with Tyler Creator mm. this week and celebrate <laughs> right. being one and two and celebrate hey. hip hop. Mm. That's what you're supposed to do, not being hey. salty, bro. We yeah. second best. Good ass. <laughs> yeah. That's what they're saying in his comments. Best. They're saying second best. best. <laughs> yeah, but no. Yeah. It, it's you can cool. still be the best and be number two and three. We're living proof, bro. Stop being salty. Right. That's a fact. I mean, I think, you know, just when we're talking about, like, just the underrated aspect of you guys, when I always, when I, when I think about it, like, how I see it from, from my lens is, like, you, you know how they, um, I heard Jay-Z say it one time. He, he's like, the Cowboys and the Indians is, like, the first one over the hill takes all the arrows. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then they kind of come back, like, yo, they shooting over there. Yeah. So it's like, I feel like you guys were super early just in terms of culturally putting shit in music and aesthetically that people weren't doing like colored dreads early like talking about like the use of acid and LSD like drug use and shit like that like you guys were doing it at a time when people weren't really doing that and like I feel like because of that they're not doing it they rapping about it though <laughs> right a fact. but I feel like because of that is like being the first is like you know they, they say the uh the second mouse gets the cheese right mm-hmm. like the first one it gets caught up in the trap and then they come scoop it up do you guys Think that or like see it that way? I think that, and I think that I'm even taking it to another level. You got guys like Malcolm X, and you got guys like Martin Luther King, right? These people woke up every day fearing that they might get killed, right? What they did during the Civil Rights Movement, that ass was, uh, what's happening now, if they never put a ripple in whatever's going on in society, you know how much more struggle we would have to go through right now if they didn't do that? And that never stopped them from preaching and doing what they do. They're both slain because of that. If you're not, if you're an artist or you stand for anything and you're not willing to do that, it's like, I don't know how I feel about you. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is not, this is not a game. It's, it's called a rap game, but it's like, yo, if you're an artist that has something to say, you just as important as an ambassador like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is a platform for you to express yourself. And to me, if that's what we are, which is the groundwork for people to have faith, to uh, believe in themselves or, even use what we doing to inspire you, cool. Just acknowledge us, you know what right. I'm saying? Like, I just don't like the whole, like, 
Now, I watch these niggas do acid in front of me, nigga, for years, nigga. Yeah. I never did it with them, but so I'm telling you, when that wasn't cool, they did it. Yeah. When dyeing your hair wasn't cool, they did it. When everything that we're doing wasn't cool, we did it. So now that it's cool, should we stop? You know, like that just doesn't make sense to me. That that that's all actually the, defeated. All that's the sad boy on the internet shit, all the saying, all, being outrageous and shocking, coloring your hair, <laughs> being honest, being yourself, all that kind of shit. We kind of did a long, long time ago. I thought about it literally yesterday. I was listening to our old music, saying, "Damn, niggas was really ahead of our time." Like that's, that's really a fact. Ahead. Oh, That's all. If social media was what it is now, I would be little pump. He'd be. It would be three little pumps here. And in a sense, of the followers. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about money and all that stuff. In a sense, it would be four million people follow on every single word because that we've been on the internet with 2008. We was posting music on the internet in 2009 and stuff like that. Eric yeah. was posting music on sites that I don't think niggas even band camp and weird shit. Was that shit. Think, something click. Uh, so I think we, we were just. Click. It was just a some shit. A, a, a great rapper once said to me. Me and ASAP Rocky was talking one time. It was in Japan, he said, we literally talking about acid and people rapping about acid. Yeah. He was like, it's not about who does it first, it's about who does it best. And that's really all it's about. That's the impression that people are going to get. It's the person who does it best <laughs> job to tell you who did it first, but they don't have to. Right. So is, that, like, is that frustrating for you guys? Just the idea of like everything we talk about now? It, it is, it's frustrating to me as fuck. It yeah. bothers me, but I get, I get over it. I, I sometimes I feel like that's the most human part of me is getting like frustrated for not getting my respect. That's probably the most emotional part of me that I feel the most about and that's why I get a little annoyed but at the same time it's like just make more fire if I, if if my if the idea that I made two years ago is the most fire thing that I ever did then I'm whack and I just I just look at it like that I can't be mad about a nigga stealing right. from me five years ago yeah that was me five years ago I was a kid right I mean I want to go back a little bit just to vacation of hell because that album to me like <clears throat> I think you guys still sonically are growing. Like, you, you're experimenting with more sounds. You're growing with more sounds. I think Vacation in Hell is a, a perfect example, like, of that. Um, and even just some of the lyrics in particular, like, Meech, when you, on the you and I verse, you just got this long fucking blackout. You're just wilding on everything. There's so much, like, in there. Like, even mm-hmm. when I listen back now, that's just, like, relevant today. When you, do you feel like that? Like, you have... I guess verses and particularly looking back at that album specifically that you feel like it still resonates the same exact way today? That verse is stronger now. Like, not That's to get all morbid, but his mother passed since we made that song. So mm-hmm. I'm talking about how much his mother means to me in the song before she passed. Yeah. That song would not mean anything to me now. It's not say anything, but knowing that I felt those things and didn't right. say it before when she was alive, mm-hmm. it wouldn't and be as heard impactful. It. And, yeah. and his mother heard right. the song. So like, right. <laughs> to me, that shit is more powerful. Um, I don't know, as time, as time progresses, I don't obsess over our music. I go back every now and then. So as time progresses, I go back and listen and say, all right, damn, maybe if I would have thought, held the song for a year, it would have made more sense because right now people are caring more about what people think in politics. There's sometimes we talked about people getting shot by police before other people were talking about it. Yeah. But then a, a major popular rapper talks about it and then now is a focal point. So I think to answer your question, we talked about everything. So for me, it's like, it's just about how can I talk about the same thing again and not repeat myself right. in a weird way. And with songs like You and I, I just feel like the more as an artist or as a group that we just talk about what we naturally feel and not overthink it, mm-hmm. it's the more we get natural moments like that where I can look back at that song and say, thank God I made this song and wrote that verse. Because that song took two years to come out. Mm-hmm. They've been recording their verses. I wanted to make that crazy ass deep verse. Yeah. And it's the reason why I took two years to write, because it was supposed to be that, so. Wow, damn, it was deep. Um, and just looking at the spectrum of Flatbush Zombies, where you guys are right now, what does the next level look like to you? I ask myself that all the time, um, mainly because I think that because we're so close as friends, I think that the music, even how it translates on stage, it's like every time we perform, it's one verse to me. And it's weird that I never really looked at that at the beginning of this. I thought when I wrote my verse, I was thinking about myself. When Meech says, what is it? I'm the shit, like. Mama gave birth out of asshole. I have to say that, you know? (laughs) I didn't write that, but because he said it, I have to say that. I think that there's a beauty to that too, because it's something that, first of all, I don't know how he thought of that. That was like fucking crazy. I would never even think of it, but it gives me the opportunity to now use that. I'm using it as a funny line, but it's serious because it's like, I don't think like that. 
right. reach things like that. But right. on stage, when he says that and I help him or we do what I think, whatever, I'm Meech. We're Meech. All three of us are Meech now. I think creating with that in mind is a special thing. And I think that I've accepted that more than ever, that when I say something, when Juice or Meech says something, that it's all of us, you know? And I, I think that that leaves room for a lot more in the future, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that the songs don't have to be, we don't have to follow any rules. Yeah. And I think that is a freedom that um, most artists probably would want to have, but they don't have the support of two people who are just as good as you. Um, and I feel like that. I feel like we've all grown, and now it's really about establishing something bigger than what we've done and continuing to stay who, true to who we are and what people fell in love with, you know? What you think, Juice? Nigga, I'm just listening to his amazing energy. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Cigar Talk Pay Your Respects edition. Yeah, my man. <laughs> right, pay your respects. I talk about a lot of shit in the raps and shit, so yeah. I'm just listening to these niggas talk about it. For honest. sure. What you think? <laughs> um, what was the question again? Just I got like, lost in the laugh. Thank yeah, you. <laughs> what do you like? What do you see? Because I'm, I'm gonna just set it up. Because what I mean is like when you we, we talked about the difference between like what they say mainstream, yeah. right? Like making an album, and then you guys have this core strong ass fan base to where you could do ten thousand at fucking Red Rocks, right? Like when you think of what's the evolution, is it like appeasing the fans? Is it just trying to get new fans? Is it growth? Like how does the growth of just the group? What does that look like For to me, you? It's uh, just like moving up on the charts. 29, you know, keep <laughs> right. building on top of that and um, laying the groundwork for more solo work and more projects. Is it, there's small victories, like he said, like moving up on the charts is like my small victories for me that, because y'all making me feel, that's for my family, that's for history. Because I know like a lot of people call that shit selling out and they, they'll get sad if we debuted at number one and sold a million copies, but at the same time, it's like, I worked mad hard. So if it just, if it means one week where I could feel like I'm on top of the world, I think that we've worked so hard that we deserve, deserve it. that shit. And okay. I don't think that that changes anything. And believe it or not, having Grammy nominated next to your name actually makes things, I might have that adult swim show now that I've been mm-hmm. trying to have for five years. So a lot of those accolades help. So I'm trying to figure out the, how to balance out the, the, the small victories and the big victories. And all I know is our fans like us, us right. being ourselves. So I'm gonna keep making music. If I feel insecure and sad and little, I'm gonna make a song called I Feel Little. And I guarantee mad of my fans felt little and they're going to embrace that. That's and fact. I think that's what we're going to keep doing. But in the midst of doing that, we're not going to dwarf ourselves and we're going to experiment. And you're going to hear things that you might have never thought you was going to hear before. And you're just going to have to deal with it. I thought that was interesting, Juice. You said, like, even solo projects. Is that, like, everyone knows you guys, like, as a group. You guys have been together. Has that ever been something that you've all considered? Like, I mean, Eric, obviously, you're doing arc, you have instrumentals, right? Yeah. But, like, just saying solo projects, is that something that you've all thought of? I think to some degree, we all have, um, just to circle back to Vacation Hell real quick, that was nine features, right? We don't ever do that shit. Yeah. Um, and fortunately for me, the nine were songs that I produced, which was cool. It was like, okay, well, can Portugal the man and Flapper Zombies make a song together? Absolutely. Can Flapper Zombies make a song with Joey Badass? Absolutely. Now it's like, can Flapper Zombies work with these other people that we want to work with and you not judge us or say that we're selling? What, what makes those features any different from anyone else? Uh, so when it answers a solo question, yeah, there's people that Meech would sound really good with, but maybe not me. And he should be able to do that shit. You know, like there shouldn't be a fight about that uh, with fans or wanting things. It's not about who comes first. It's about like what we represent. That is only gonna help the pot be even bigger and better. You know what I'm saying? There's no competition. My ego has been stripped years ago, feeling insecure about any of that shit, bro. Like, I just wanna make music, bro. You know what I'm saying? I feel that. I feel that, man. I, I definitely, um, I'm excited for just the, you know, the growth and what's to come. I know y'all working on a couple new things. I'm not gonna drop shit because I know Josh gonna be on my head. So I, don't, <laughs> I don't wanna say any names, but if y'all feel comfortable yeah, saying I play, I play what's happening, stuff. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I played you. I don't know. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> I played Naji some shit though. Naji heard a lot of Man. a lot of shit. How'd you like the stuff? Who was it? Yo, I'm just gonna say that it's like I said. Is I just enjoy the fact that you guys are sonically creating things that there's nothing that sounds like that. Like what I heard, it doesn't. There's nothing out really that sounds like that. It's just something sonically. Like when you hear it, you just understand. Like damn, you know, you guys are operating in a different space, and it's fucking dope. You know what else, too? I think that a lot of times when something comes out and it's so unique, people don't, and 
I guess I used to be like pissed off or I would get tired when somebody would be like, yo, this beat is like not hitting or whatever. And I'm like, you know what? It's not even always that. It's like when I first heard Outkast, I was like, this is some weird shit. I was a kid. Yeah. But that was mostly because it was a drawing. The Clement I shit was just drawing. I'm like, but how are they people and humans if they're drawings and then the <laughs> right. Zodiac shit? I'm like, what the fuck is going on? These niggas is weird. Outkast is one of my favorite groups of all time because <coughs> that is a thread that's been in their music from the beginning. Like, and then I've learned to love their music because, to be honest, they paved, they were much like us in the sense of they took the brunt of whatever insults. One of my favorite lines is Andre, what's wrong with Andre? Is he gay? Any, is he in a cult? When they gonna break up? When they gonna wake up? Nigga, I'm better than ever. What's wrong with you? Get down. That's mad real. Like, somebody kicks some shit like that, you really have to be a confident nigga to say something like that, especially right. in the 90s and early 2000s. To say anything like that was like, yo, you wildin'. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, if it wasn't for them, there would be none. There would be, and they just one group that I could reference and say like they really are the blood of Flatbush Zombies, you know. So I don't know, bro. Like I feel like the the scape and the ceiling there that don't even exist, bro. Like mm. we can do whatever the fuck you want to do, and as long as we have reliable fans that continue to support us, come to our shows, buy our merch, they know that all that money is literally helping us pursue our dreams. So. I ain't worried about it. As long as you got fans that ain't scared, like, don't oh. act like the, if Eric releases a song tomorrow <laughs> and it's spoken word, that it's over. Like, niggas act like it's the end of the world nowadays. Kyrie right. have one bad game. Is Kyrie Irving's career done? Right. Is everything is... The clickbait mentality yeah. has literally... It's, it's went from the internet to your mind state. Right. You think like clickbait now. This, yeah. nigga, this, nigga, this nigga says one bar you don't like and it's like, damn, it's over for the zombies. I'm done. So that's the part of the shit that is so weird to me. It's why I don't really look at comments... I don't really look at any of that shit anymore at all. I'm just, my goal is to just be like a, just keep making music and keep moving yeah. and just keep going. And then look back at it five years from now and say, God damn, we made mad fire. Yo, like, do y'all ever look back just cause y'all, you guys have come so fucking far from like the inception, right? Like, mm -hmm. and it's just a testament to the journey. Like we all are on, you know, everybody watching this, we're all on some sort of journey and something that we're trying to attain. And when, the progress doesn't go to the time frame you have in your head is fucking mm, frustrating. That's right? a fact. That's right. So when real. the time frame doesn't line up to like where you feel like you should get X, Y, yeah. and Z, whatever well, it is you're working for. I've been learned that from when we dropped yeah. the waffle. No the only thing that, yeah, the only thing that happened was a get, I think I guessed the amount of views we we're gonna get. I knew people were gonna like how we look. But yeah. as far as where I thought I was gonna be when we first rapped, I had there was some times where I thought I was gonna still be poor and live in Flatbush. And there was some times where I thought I was going to be the biggest motherfucking richest motherfucker because we're in that nice. And I learned that from that first maybe week of making music. You don't know what's going to happen. You're in a nice place now, man. You, you're kind of comfortable cool. right now. Nigga kind of comfortable right now. It's cool. You're all cool. right, right now, bro. It's cool. I wish I owned it. <laughs> right, you know? Right. But that, that, I learned that early. Like, you don't really, you don't know. And maybe those crazy niggas that are delusional really manifest all the shit into their life because they're so delusional that they think they're the best. And they say to themselves, I'm going to have the biggest record. And they, they're garbage, but they say to themselves that and they believe it and it ends up happening. Yeah. Manifestation. Mm -hmm. I feel that. All right, yo, um, I don't want to fucking be on the Joe Budden podcast doing two hours <laughs> and shit, you know what I'm saying? But, so I'm getting ready. But yo, Juice, I want to know, we got talking Terps. Mm. What's up? Like, I'm seeing the brand everywhere. I'm seeing the brand moving. You got it on your pants. It, it, it's <coughs> happening. It's heart. a thing. Can you, can you just give me a little more insight, just like what it is, what it means to you, and can I fucking smoke some Terps? Like, <laughs> talking Terps right now is just a clothing line. We're working on getting flour done. You know, talking Terps is that flavor, the fire. You know what I'm saying? And we can talk Terps all day. Come over. Can you explain to them what Terps are? Yeah, very please. Fast. All right. Don't get all scientific. Don't get Tony Stark on them. Like, <laughs> yeah, nah, all right, Terpentine turp is, uh, is the is the thing that gives it the, the weedest attribute of the flavor. So if they had like a, let's say he, he'll get like a Fruity Pebble tw uh, uh, Terps. They would put that turpentine, turpentine, is that what they call it? Terpene. Terpene. Into the plant, therefore it tastes like Fruity Pebbles. It would be like New York Subway. They'll extract the Subway smell and taste from the air and make the weed taste like it. So that's why so he's every, talking. So every plant in existence has terps. Even the weed that you smoke, if your weed tastes like soil, you got some terrible terps. You need to bump that up with some citrus, some pine, mm. some mm. OG, pine, OG, citrus, funk. Don't give all your secrets out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's that's <laughs> no chemistry. Yeah, you just want to taste right. the flavor. You're not trying to taste just, just tobacco leaf. So you don't want to just taste earth. Yeah. Yo, do you remember the time you had the talking turf shirt on and that lady thought talking turfs was <laughs> sign language? She thought it was a talking interpretation. Yeah, talk that's inter fire. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So that's, 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 that's what it is right now, and we're working on getting flour done. But it's a clothing line, talkingturfs.com. Next job, next month. 
Next drop every month. All right, for sure. Yo, how are y'all? <laughs> Lastly, how are you guys looking forward to this fucking tour? It's 10 niggas <laughs> on the oh, fucking Jesus. tour bus. It, it's it's oh, pandemonium. Oh. 10 niggas on the stage, 10 niggas on the tour bus. Like, well, we're, 10 not doing 10, we're not doing 10 rappers on our tour bus, no. Oh, right, no, right, we're not doing, I'm not doing that this year. No, no. no. <laughs> um, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to to look left and right and not only see two people, yeah. but see a, a bunch of other people and think to myself, oh, I can catch my breath finally. Right. That's really going to be so fun. That's going to be fun to and me. And you're never going to be alone. That's, that's really fun. fun. It's impossible. That's cool. Right. Right. Yeah, I'm ready to see the crowd. I'm ready to, I'm ready to hype other people's records. I'm ready to just have a bigger stage, perform for 10,000 people and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, this shit's gonna be exciting, man. I don't really know what to expect. I don't know, I don't know what to expect. It's gonna be fun, man. Yeah. All right, man, I'm excited, man. This is a great interview. I know y'all fans is gonna be hyped to see Hell this yeah. shit. We talk yeah. some real shit in the Let's go. Juice, I need some lemonade turps. Lemonade turps. <laughs> yeah, I got all that shit, you man. Lemon tree, gelinate, the gelinate, the gelato with the fucking lemonade, man. Sorrel. Let's make I some sorrel. That. Yeah. What's that? That's a gel, that's a Let's make some like, sorrel turps. What the lemonade? Yeah. All right, yo, listen, man, I appreciate you guys coming through. Thanks for having us. Yeah, long enough, man. Another one, Cigar Talk Rap Radar. We out of here. Blah!